How's it going, folks? I'm Mark from Like Minded Lunatics. Howdy, folks. I'm Lottie. And we've got a fun episode for you today. Lottie, I don't know where to categorize this. So I think I'm going to put it out on a Friday for a okay. Friday night reaction video, but this might also be a Lottie's Rockycation. I'm not, okay. enti- I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, explain to folks what the Lottie's Rockycation uh, playlist uh, is. If, it, if this is a Lottie's Rockycation, what it is, it's uh, it's Mark exposing me to music that I would never normally listen to myself. Yes. It's how I've learned about heavy metal and Metallica and a bunch of other things that I, I naturally avoid because it's noisy to me. But... I have learned to see some of the artistic beauty in the lyrics and the way they compose everything. And some of the Lottie's Rockycation I show you because I feel like it's important for you to understand, to understand me. <laughs> yes. For Metallica. <laughs> yes, yes. And then others because I think that you'll genuinely like it. So like L7, pretend oh that we're Oh my God, de- I loved L7! You loved that one. <laughs> I think you liked Candlebox Far Behind, too. That I did like Candlebox. Um, I think you've liked a number of them, and I think you'll like this one. So this yes. is a band called Evanescence. Um, it's Oh, I thought it was Evanescience. It's <laughs> no, Seth. It's it's Evanescence is Evanescence. the name of it. Okay. Um, uh, the front woman is a uh, woman by the name of Amy Lee. Now, we've looked at Hailstorm before. Yes. And you've liked Hailstorm. Yes. Lizzie Hale. And we've also looked at... Um, at Taylor Momsen as well from the Pretty Reckless, we've we've looked at a number of her. I got so high. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> okay. So yes. Amy yeah. Lee is friends with both of those ladies. Oh, that's kind of nice. In fact, both of those ladies appear, uh, their voices appear in this song, both Lizzie Hale and Taylor Momsen. Um, so Evanescence is a band that kind of got started around the time. Do you remember the uh, Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck? Yes. Okay. They they came to prominence during that time. They had a song on that soundtrack called "Bring Me to Life." Okay. And uh, they kind of got associated with that genre of, of rock and roll at the time, which had like rap and stuff in the rock, but that really wasn't what they did. Um, so they have like a rock sound, but Amy Lee's voice is more, I want, I'm going to say Ann Wilson. from. Oh, P- really? From Heart. Oh. I feel like if I'm going to draw a comparison, it's probably going to be to Ann Wilson. I love Ann Wilson. Whereas like Lizzie, I would say, is a Joan Jett offshoot you know, okay, frying okay. out and yelling yeah. and stuff. I'm going to say Amy Lee is an Ann Wilson, almost operatic. With really, really a lot of voice control. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, now, this song is called Use My Voice. It comes off of their uh, their most recent album. I think Bitter Truth is what, what the title of that album is. Um, and I just want to read you a little bit about what she said about this song. Okay. Uh, so Amy Lee said that this is an era of awakening and full of uh, powerful beauty. I hope to inspire others to seek truth find their own voices and use them as I step up to use mine. Don't let anybody speak for you. Only you can do that. Uh, Then she went on to say that as we were recording this song, I was listening back to my own words and I started asking myself, what can I do to use my voice? How can we use our platform, i.e. her band, for good and empower people? I believe that this is an important revolutionary time. Things are messed up right now. I've never been politically Uh, publicly political. I've kept that part of myself private because I see music as a place to get away from our differences and find unity. We need to be unified now more than ever, but I finally feel in my heart that if if I'm going to be true to my word, it's time to use my voice to help promote our future. And so that was what she said about this song. Now, this song also features a number of other female singers as backup artists because she wanted to create a, a sound of uh, female singers to create a tidal wave of girl power. That's what she said. Oh, I like that already. So she's got Lizzie Hale, Deanna Jacob, who is the the writer of the lyrics, Lindsay Sterling, Taylor Momsen from The Pretty Reckless, uh, Sharon Dan Abel, uh, Amy McCall- McCallhorn, and a number of other female artists in it. So that's the background of this one. And I, I'm going to say this because I get, I'm cons- I just crossed my arms when you're talking about it, and I said, and people, sometimes people look at body language and they say, that you're sure. Like, and I'm going to tell you this Mark's studio is cold. <laughs> it's cold in here. It has to so, be with all these damn lights, yeah, right? I know, I know. But that's why my arms are cold. I, I, I do like all these women singers. I want to make sure that comes across. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uncross it right now. I all don't right. want to give anyone a bad impression. Everybody understands. Okay. Really well, folks, cold. it's tradition to have a beverage Friday night reaction video. Uh, I have an hate. Easy IPA, uh, and I primarily like it because of the cover. Look at that Space Wolf. Uh, it's gorgeous. I like anything called Space Wolf, but I'm drinking Topo Chico, and you can't see it at all, can you? It's just it's <laughs> rubbing out. Oh well, it's it's really Topo Chico. All right, folks, here we go. Use my voice, Evanescence. 
So far. I like this. It was it was so beautiful. You're right. I can see the ant because she has this. Uh, her voice can be so soft and not silent because it's a powerful voice, right? But so soothing. And then she goes into this growl, which is yes. just amazing. And it's a different growl than like Lizzie's. Lizzie's yeah. does what's vocal frying, where she intentionally, uh, like she intentionally makes it scratchy and no, this and this is there's nothing scratchy about this. She's it's, not frying. No, uh, it, it, I, it reminds me of Crazy on You because yeah. she, she, she's she's very yep. It just. I think Very it's a powerful, great, and you understand everything she's saying. Absolutely, and I love this line: "Label me bitch, because I dare to draw my own line." And that's what they do. God, that's a powerful yeah, lyric. That's true. Oof. God, the anger in that is <laughs> I'm, it's physically I, pushing you. Yeah, I know they've been around for a while, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you have Daredevil. Like 2002 or something? But I'd I have to look back. I don't think I've ever spent any time looking for them or listening to them at all. But this is kind of nice. I think you would like them a lot. I know you like female vocalists quite a bit. I do. And she has this voice that is both powerful and melodic at the same time. Uh, I will go on record and say I think that as far as melody is concerned, she's a little stronger than Lizzie Hale, and I, you know how much I love her. But I think, uh, for my money, uh, Amy Lee is more operatic, and she has a greater granular control over her voice. Gotcha. Um, but she's a gorgeous singer. Yeah, this is her voice is beautiful. Yeah, I'm a waste of the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I gotta say, I love the build up to that guitar solo. When they're flashing those scenes of her angry yes. in the black and white, along with the color stuff. Oh my God, that's a great use of uh, of moving between colors and stuff. And then Lizzie coming in too. I feel like that Amy Lee is the goddess and Lizzie is her right hand with the sword. Oh, I like that picture. Yeah. Where, I like that. I can actually see that. Where Amy is the goddess and she's like, hey, go take care of him. <laughs> We got some problems and over here. And the Valkyrie takes care of it. You know, I, I just had to say, and, and, and I don't know her. I don't know what her views are. I don't know anything about it. Uh, they're what you hope. Well, that makes me feel better. But I got to tell you, I, I don't know if it's just me, but if, when I see American flags running someplace, my first thought was, I, I, those are probably not my people. You know what? I was exactly thinking that about how sad, it's, how sad it is that the symbol of our nation has been appropriated by the worst parts of our society. Yes. And, and they leave us feeling like it's not ours anymore. You know what? Fuck them. <laughs> it's ours, ours as much as them. You know what? Thank you. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm healed. I feel better about this now. So, Thank folks, you. we're both native Texans. <laughs> yes. And I, I don't know if, about you, but I'll see stuff on, on social media and stuff where somebody's like, if you don't like it, move out of Texas. Fuck you. I was here just as long as you. <laughs> yeah. This is my state as much as it is yours. Yeah. Yeah. You move we're, out. We're here. Dickhead. It's, it's, like, a, it's oh, our state. It makes me so mad. I just want to punch people in the mouth. <laughs> There's a comedian who says that uh, he, he goes back. He says that his grandparents were Texans. And it, when his great grandparents were Texans. And if you go even back further, his great great grandparents, well, they were Mexicans because that's what Texas that's was. That's what Texas was. <laughs> well, it's that old <laughs> saying that uh, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed yeah. us. After 1880, apparently this is just now a different country. <laughs> it is. That's what we do. <laughs> plant a flag. That's right. Plant a flag. No country, no flag. <laughs> do you have a flag? <laughs> no, we're going to get a cake or death. Is cake gonna... or death? Oh my God. <laughs> well, we've got no cake left. We didn't expect such a run. Uh, I would always pick cake. Cake. <laughs> And I'm just gonna say, I've had days when I would have picked death. <laughs> That's kind of days. <laughs> that you would do said, pick take death? death. Death. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this now. <laughs> this is beautiful. Her voice is beautiful. This is a really impressive song. Yeah, I really like it. And I also like, you know, just the message behind it. I also think it's important to understand this was like, this was three and a half years ago when she wrote this song. So a lot of the things that were going on during that time period obviously informed this. And, and so, Evanescence. 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 That's it. Is that right? You did it. Okay. Yeah. I always, I think I always thought they were heavier than this. This is about as heavy as they get. Well, this is this is surprising to me. And in fact, I would say this is the heavier end of them. They have a few that are just slightly heavier than this. Okay. But for the most part, the heaviness comes from like the tuning of the guitars and stuff. And, and I, just to be clear, when I say heavy, I, I don't mean the lyrics. I, there, there's a, sound, a quality to, to metal mm. that, that Mark loves and I don't like that it's really feels heavy and noisy. And I, for some reason, had always always miscategorized them right. and had not listened to them specifically because that's kind of what I thought they were. But this is really nice. I'm going to dive deep, and I don't know if people know this reference. There's a Canadian singer by the name of Lorena McKennett. She does a lot of Gaelic Love stuff. Love Lorena McKennett! The I, Mummer's Dance! Yep, The Mummer's Dance. Uh, there's a ton of songs. The uh, Bonnie Portmore is probably my favorite. Oh. It's a gorgeous poem, by the way, uh, but her, her rendition of it is probably the most moving. But I think that Amy Lee sings in the same way that Lorena McKennett does. Really? Yeah, I think if you took, like... Amy Lee's voice and put it over that Gaelic style music, I think it'd be the same thing. Well, now I'm going to have to pay, I'm going to have to pay some attention to this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lorena, uh, by the way, just to uh, promote cool. a, an album that's 30 years old at this point, <laughs> uh, Lorena McKinnon's album, The Mask in the Mirror is something oh, that folks I have check that. out. I love that it's album. Good album. God, I love her. <laughs> you know, the shocking thing, the number of people that know that album and think that no one else knows who Lorena McKinnon is is shocking to me. I mentioned it in front of Ricky, and he was like, "Oh, he's one of she's one of my favorite female <laughs> artists. You know her too, 
We should do a whole thing on Lorena uh, McKinnon. Yes, we should. I would be here for that. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's really the only way we build our presence here on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. of course. And, and if they're if they're up for it, get a shirt. That's right. We do have merch. That's a great way to support the channel because we can't monetize some of this stuff. So uh, take care of yourselves, folks. Lottie and I will see you soon. Adios. Adios.